Okay, move out. men keep an eye on them now we don't want them getting in our way hey this is Bob ready with your National Guard hope and I want to tell you that the story of today's Army and Air National Guard is something all Americans can be proud of okay men they're getting too close let them have it Look at them run. Get in our way, Willie. That'll teach them. Is the coast clear? All right. Thank you, man. They're not really running away, folks. They're just moving into position for some sharpshooting. At the rate they're moving, they'll be there in no time. These M42s can move along at 40 miles per hour, and that's really hustling for babies this size. You know, the story of any military organization is found in its men, in its machines, and in its missions. These men are Virginia Army National Guardsmen, and that's a radio-controlled aerial target, better known to these guys as an R cat. Their mission is to shoot it down. Once this little bird gets airborne, it's up to the RCAT controller to keep it flying on its prescribed course. You might say he's one pilot who flies with both feet on the ground. When these guys open up on that RCAT, they have the capability of pumping out 120 rounds per minute from each tube or barrel. Man, that's 240 rounds per minute. I'm glad they're on our side. Incidentally, the weapon I've been referring to is the M42 Duster. Its heyday was a generation ago during World War II when it dusted enemy aircraft from the skies. After World War II, the Army gave the entire duster system to the Army National Guard. The guardsmen took the weapon, trained on it, and became professionally competent with it. Watch them go after this RCAT. what I call coming in for a soft landing. Makes things a little softer in our pocketbooks, too. If you've been thinking that guardsmen face a paper enemy in the field on these training exercises, don't say it out loud. The guard uses its own aggressors right from its own ranks to oppose the good guys on field exercises like this one at Camp Grayling, Michigan. Coordination is a key factor in any exercise. These guardsmen are checking the lay of the terrain prior to the exercise. Battle planning strategy is just as important to the bad guys as it is to the heroes. These men are jumping off on an attack which will test the reaction and effectiveness of elements of the 107th Armored Cavalry Regiment of the Ohio Army National Guard. The guerrillas have plenty going for them, as you can see. These scenes are typical of the realistic combat conditions guardsmen undergo at training sites throughout the United States as well as overseas. Things could get a little hot around here. Got to hand it to them, though. 
He really knows how to use that oversized cigarette lighter. I don't know about you, but as for me, I'm not too sure, but what I'd just as soon be on the aggressor side in this battle. I'm just kidding. It's mighty comforting to know the bad guys are really good guys in this case. They're all part of the National Guard team. It's red, white, and blue as old Glory herself. Now, if heavier reinforcements were needed, the Guard has them too. This honest John Rocket can deliver a mighty punch if needed. Manning these powerful rockets takes a lot of training, believe me. But these Guardsmen are well trained and well prepared. The Army National Guard is composed of many different type units, including airborne and special forces. Organizations that demand the best in courage and stamina. These West Virginia Army Guardsmen are preparing to board a West Virginia Air Guard plane for a challenging night operation. Because of the nature of their military responsibilities, National Guardsmen don't accept the words professionalism and readiness as mere slogans. That guy reminds me of Crosby trying to get to the bank with all his loot. There's no room for the timid in an outfit like this. No, sir. And the important thing to remember is that Guardsmen have accepted their responsibilities readily. They're all volunteers. Men who have stood up ready to be counted as their country needs them. By their oath, they're pledged irrevocably to safeguard the nation and its institutions against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Any guardsman who is worthy of the name accepts this as a fact of service. Guardsmen are citizen soldiers, and their purpose is the American purpose. For more than 300 years now, theirs has been an unbroken record of duty accomplished, of lives saved, of property secured, and of order in the face of potential chaos. Because of the close ties of the Army and the Air National Guard, they are working together continuously. These Rhode Island Army Guardsmen, for example, are practicing an infiltration operation with the help of their Rhode Island Air Guard buddies. The Air Guard has four of these Air Commando units, two of which are equipped with this HU-16 amphibian aircraft. In situations where commando units require either a land or sea rendezvous or both, this sturdy flying boat can maneuver about and land almost anywhere with ease. Guardsmen are trained to operate under all climactic conditions over all types of terrain. Because the Guard is dispersed in communities throughout the United States, you'll find that many men are already are skilled in many of their military assignments before they ever raise their hand to take the oath as a member of the Guard. And that saves dollars for the taxpayers. wild surroundings of the West Yellowstone area set the scene for these Montana Special Forces Guardsmen as they worked their way to the top of this barren outcropping. Ordinarily, this cliff would be considered a dangerous obstacle, but danger is just another word to these guys. They figured that the best way around is over the side. Some people call this a gung-ho gravitational go-mobile. Let's watch this fellow. Now, that wasn't bad. However, if you'd rather take the express route, man, that's what I'd call moving. These guys are on the move, too. Graceful movements, cat-like responses, superb balance and control. That's what it takes for a ballet like this. Yet those are the talents of these Montanans that contribute to their capabilities as guardsmen. They're a proud bunch, and they've got a right to be. Now, it's pretty nice to get paid for this type of thing, but it's training with a purpose. They're actually on a mission to ambush a mythical enemy outpost. Once they reach the area of operations, a brief planning session is all that's needed to finalize the plan of attack. Strict silence becomes the order of the day as the guardsmen close in on their objective. They know the outpost is somewhere close. Then, without warning, they spot the enemy just a few yards away. Because silence is imperative in a situation like this, the usual weapons are not employed. The quiet deadliness of a swift arrow does a much better job. Don't be alarmed. It was just a dummy.
from the deep snows of Montana to the tropical beauty of Hawaii. That gives you some idea of the guard's scope of geographical operations. They reach into Alaska and Puerto Rico, too. These Hawaii guardsmen are on a routine patrol in an exercise that will eventually bring aerial support from mainland air guard units. A last minute check of plans is made before the troops move out for the objective. You know, the guard is composed of many veterans of World War II, of Korea, and even Vietnam. Their background and know-how provides a measurement of leadership that should serve as comfort to any parent whose son has joined the guard. These veteran guardsmen know the ropes. They've had battle experience. They've been leading men for years, and they know their business, including the techniques of camouflage. See anything? Well, watch. You hear a lot about mortar fire in Vietnam. Well, this is what a mortar looks like. Guardsmen are trained on them, as well as every other fire system with which they're armed. Here's a grenade launcher. It's an accurate little weapon. Just watch. Bullseye. And if you really want to clobber a target, grab one of these 106 millimeter recoilless rifles. These guardsmen operate this weapon with perfection. Bullseye again. Really packs a wallet, doesn't it? If anyone thinks it's all sunshine and flowers in Hawaii, just look at this. This is the Air Guard's radar station atop Mount Koala. Nestled in virgin forest and frequently invaded by wild pigs, this outpost, 4,000 feet high, is shrouded in fog much of the time. That doesn't bother these Hawaiians, however. That radar sweeps through that fog and reaches miles in all directions of the Pacific in surveillance against a possible enemy attack. Nearby, other guardsmen receive and interpret the information collected by the radar atop of the mountain. Each guardsman is a specialist, and each knows his responsibility, like this fellow writing backwards on a transparent wall. If you want some fun, try that sometime. This man has located some air guard aerial tankers and jet fighters who are flying from the mainland. They're about 200 miles out, and the radar shows that they're about to rendezvous for the fighter refueling. Then they will continue to Hawaii, where they will take part in exercises with the active army and with the army guard. The air guard has five air refueling units equipped with a KC-97 aircraft. With four reciprocating engines and two jet engines, these birds really get out of move. These tankers from the Illinois, Ohio, and Wisconsin air guard provide the fuel for the jet fighters making the deployment. They're F-84s from the Ohio Air National Guard. Imagine meeting a couple of thousand miles over the ocean to gas up. It's a bit different from pulling into the corner service station. This refueling capability within the Guard makes it possible for the Guard's fighter units to deploy anywhere in the world in a matter of hours. These Air Guardsmen are operationally ready too. And that means that they're ready for combat the minute they get where they're going. After landing at Hickam Air Force Base, the guardsmen prepare to launch a mission to the island of Hawaii. They get a thorough briefing on their mission and pinpoint the target area. These are your citizen airmen. These air crews meet the same standards as the active Air Force air crews do. They do not ask, nor do they receive, any credit for performing their roles as part-time airmen.
Most of these men are successful businessmen in their home community. And the National Guard believes that it is highly unlikely that a citizen soldier or citizen airman would demonstrate qualities as a soldier or airman that he does not possess as a citizen. This operation was known as Tropic Lightning, a good example of the support the Guard provides to active military service. These fighters were working with Army ground troops. As a part of their training for combat, they participate in operations in which close air support is demonstrated. Because the Air Guard is able to support these missions, the Air Force can turn its attention to higher priority missions. Fighter pilots carry out airstrikes with speed and efficiency. closely with other services, too. These RF-84s of the Alabama Air Guard are taking off on a photo reconnaissance mission over Puerto Rico in exercise clove hitch, while another plane has just returned with a load of film for immediate processing. Clove hitch was a massive operation in the Caribbean involving all the services. Air Guard jet fighters, reconnaissance aircraft, and aerial tankers joined these Navy men from the aircraft carrier Forrestal, proving once again the teamwork among the services provides the background for effective defense whenever and wherever needed. Marines were participants too. They came ashore by sea and air. Here they are engaging in an air assault after being dispatched from ships at sea to reinforce infantry elements ashore. All guardsmen swear allegiance to the state and to the nation. For that reason, they train not only for their federal mission, but for their state mission as well. These guardsmen are playing the part of rioters in this training session. In the event police forces are overwhelmed, the National Guard is the only force immediately available to a community for the distasteful assignment of quelling civil disorder. But the Guard has had to face the real thing on many occasions lately. In most cases, folks have recognized the unpleasantness of the duty, and they've accepted the Guard as a force for the preservation of law and order. Whether you're young or old, however, facing a shouting mob or a lurking sniper calls for the highest degree of discipline. This is what the Guardsmen faced in Cicero, Illinois, when demonstrators marched. These are scenes from the Watts Riot, where two divisions of Guardsmen were called to duty. The usual fire damage and destruction followed us in each riot while patrolling guardsmen surveyed troubled streets searching for snipers. Watch closely now. This is a spectacular shot of a fireman just as he's hit by sniper fire. It's a dangerous, frightening duty, but guardsmen face up to this responsibility as they face up to all others. Because of the increased intensity of violence in our cities, the guard has accelerated its riot control training. This was Detroit, the highest level of damage and violence ever experienced in an American city. Fires and lots of ruined personal property. Snipers, looting and more destruction. The protection of personal property always has its problems, especially when the trouble spreads like quicksilver over an area plagued by hidden danger. Two guardsmen were assigned to every fire truck to protect the firemen from sniper fire. 
They were mighty busy, on duty for long hours with little rest, as they helped the weary firefighters battle more than 800 fires. Whenever a flood, tornado, or other disaster strikes a community, the guard is usually there. This flood brought out the guard in Kansas, where the guardsmen played an important role in rescuing the stranded and protecting property. Guardsmen were on the scene immediately, aiding those who suffered in the tragedy in whatever way they could. Ever wonder who fills those sandbags that lie on the shores of an angry river? Ever wonder how those sandbags get on the riverbank? You're looking at the answer to both questions. Those bags weigh 40 to 50 pounds each. Every means is used to reach the stricken who need help. Trucks slowly search out victims. Guard helicopters do their share to assist in rescuing persons stranded in a remote area. Few tragedies strike with more fury than a howling tornado. This one leveled half of Oak Lawn, Illinois. 50 lives were lost during this freak of nature. Guardsmen were on the job immediately, searching debris, helping out the wounded, assisting firemen, fighting fires, and restoring power and communication. This school was all but demolished. Shattered ruins offer mute resistance to the presence of patrolling guardsmen, alert to the possibility of looters. Because the guard plays a vital role in providing medical assistance in these disasters, nurses are a necessary part of both the Army and Air National Guard. The Air Guard flies many aeromedical missions for the Air Force, and its aeromedical personnel have comforted many victims of the Vietnam War. Assisted by the medics, these nurses fly missions around the world. They work around the clock when necessary to comfort the sick, disabled, and wounded. This specialist helps the nurse check oxygen equipment aboard this C-97. If you really want to find out how terrific these people are, just ask some of the boys who've been wounded in Vietnam. This is Captain Betty Aiken of the Tennessee Air National Guard. She's made more than 23 trips to Vietnam. Here she administers aid to an air evacuated patient. Air Guard nurses receive specialized training so they can meet in-flight emergencies. I understand you have a pretty bad back injury. Have you ever flown before? Yeah, with good-looking nurses like that around, who wants to be healthy? What they need are more beautiful nurses like me. <laughs> yeah, we save your kind for us taxpayers. Much has been said and written concerning the tradition and heritage of the National Guard. Throughout its long history, the Guard has always attracted men of the highest caliber, many of whom have gone on to become great leaders and respected figures of prominence in the world. For example, George Washington, one of our early militiamen. Others make an impressive list. Here are just a few. Abraham Lincoln. Yes, sir. Old Honest Abe. Our 16th president. He started with a militia in 1832 and became a captain with the 4th Regiment of the Illinois Volunteers. Harry S. Truman, our 33rd president, served as a World War I artillery officer commanding Battery D of the 135th Field Artillery, Missouri National Guard. Charles A. Lindbergh, hero of the aviation world, who won fame with the first solo flight over the Atlantic Ocean in 1927. Lindy's military career began in the 110th Observation Squadron, Missouri National Guard. He was granted leave to make his flight. General Earl G. Wheeler, the top military man in the United States as chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, began his military service as a member of the District of Columbia Army National Guard. General Curtis LeMay, former Chief of Staff of the Air Force, he started his illustrious career in the Ohio Army National Guard as an artilleryman. Brigadier General Charles W. Sweeney, Deputy Chief of Staff for Air, Massachusetts Air National Guard. He piloted the B-29 that dropped the second atomic bomb on Japan. Its target, Nagasaki. Brigadier General Joseph J. Foss, South Dakota Air National Guard. Former governor of that state, a top ace who won the Medal of Honor in World War II. Captain Larry B. Mason, a veteran of Vietnam who joined the Michigan Air National Guard. Awarded the Air Force Cross for extraordinary heroism in Vietnam. While attacking an enemy target, his B-57 tactical jet bomber was hit repeatedly. With a wounded navigator aboard, one engine shut down and the other one on fire, 
approximately 30 square feet of surface area missing from the right wing, and most of the electrical system knocked out. This young pilot nursed his plane to a safe landing in friendly territory. The Guard also numbers prominent figures in the fields of entertainment and sports among those in its ranks. Here is Bobby Rydell, popular singing and recording star, seen here performing at the Carib Hilton in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Bobby is a specialist fourth class in the Pennsylvania Army National Guard. Bob Hayes, teammate of Lilies with the Cowboys, all pro offensive flanker, member of the Texas Army National Guard. He's known as the world's fastest unit, and you can see why. Gary Anderson, Lieutenant in the California Army National Guard. His specialty, shooting. He's the guy who set three new records in winning the World's Rifle Championship at Cairo in 1962. Won two gold medals in the 1963 Pan Am Games. Set a new world record and picked up a gold medal in the Olympics at Japan in 1964 and won seven gold medals during 1966, firing an international shooting union sponsored event. Gary, by the way, is studying for the ministry. If you think the sky's the limit for ex-guardsmen, you're absolutely right. And here are some of the men who can prove it. Russell L. Schweikart, better known as Rusty, former member of the Massachusetts Air National Guard and the first guardsman to be selected for astronaut training directly from the guard. You're watching him at work in a zero-gravity situation, hiring out bugs so future space flights can be as safe as possible. If you haven't spotted him yet, he's the guy with the red hair. Donald K. Deke Slayton, one of the original seven astronauts. At one time in his career, was a member of the Minnesota Air National Guard. Deke has taken over the administrative responsibilities pertaining to all astronauts in NASA's program. Charles Conrad, Jr., astronaut who has orbited the Earth on two occasions and is raring to go again. He's a former member of the Pennsylvania Army National Guard. That's just a few. There are many others. the Guard is the community. That's why it's an organization you can count on. The chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Earl Wheeler, once characterized the Guard by saying, from my long association with the National Guard, I've arrived at two conclusions. First, as a military organization, it is consistently better than the material with which it is equipped. Second, when the chips are down, the Guard surmounts whatever obstacles confront it and gets the job done. Well, the Guard's been that way for more than 330 years now. That's right, 330 years. Its past has been one of glory and accomplishment. But like that Saturn rocket, it has a long way to go. It'll reach higher and higher achievements in the future. This, then, is really not the end. It's just the beginning.